Hey everyone, I'm Evan Freiberger, and something very strange is happening to this tropical wave down here. It hasn't quite formed into a tropical storm yet, and it's not acting as we would have suspected it by this point, and it's got something to do with what's inside of Cuba and the Dominican Republic. Also, back over here, just to the east, we have a Category 1 hurricane, Humberto, with 75 mile per hour winds moving northwest at 3 miles per hour, so it's definitely still at a walking pace. You could probably speed walk faster than this storm right now. And then at the end of the video, we'll be talking about this awesome weather that is coming to the majority of the United States, minus parts of the East Coast. Before we get started, I read a study that the more and more that you like and subscribe, the stronger your thumbs get. So if you're okay with having weaker thumbs, the older and older you get, that's fine, but liking and subscribing to this video in my channel will lead to absolutely yoked thumbs like mine. Because I'll be liking videos like crazy. Maybe a little bit too much. But coming back down to our wave, this was potentially future Imelda still hasn't formed into a tropical depression or tropical storm. We bring this all the way back into yesterday. You could see that a lot of our models were indicating that this storm would interact with Hispaniola, Dominican Republic, and then a eventually move up to the north out of here, but that didn't happen. As I push this forward, you can see our storm just kind of hangs out near the Dominican Republic and then eventually pushes off to the west. And now, instead of going up to the north, it's gone pretty much straight west and now it's interacting with eastern Cuba. So instead of going something like this, like a lot of our models indicating, it's actually gone something like this. A very strange thing to do, but I think I have the answer for why it is. And also for what that little jog to the west might mean for people further down the line in the east coast of the United States. So here's the GFS latest run today. See a low pressure system is over here a little bit north of the current position. If we come over to where the National Hurricane Center is saying this is, you can see that that center of low pressure is just off of the east coast of Cuba and is still meandering towards Cuba. You can see this is kind of accurate, but you could probably put it a little bit further to the south and a little bit further to the west than what the GFS is saying. The GFS is still trying to yank this thing up to the north pretty quickly from here. But as of right now, it really doesn't seem like our storm is moving that much. Now, if we compare this to previous runs, you can see that we've been slowly over time going more and more to the west with this initial position. Not a whole lot, but you can see that there definitely is a difference between models. It becomes a little bit more vast when you push the model forward a little bit more. You can see that earlier runs had this all the way out over the Atlantic north of the Dominican Republic in Haiti. And then now look at this. As they continue to push this into the future, it keeps meandering off to the west. And I've got a feeling that we have got something in Cuba that might cause this forecast to become a little bit weirder. And that has to do, I think, with these mountains that are over here into the Dominican Republic. First, our storm slammed up against that. We get a lot of orographic lift off of these mountains. That moisture kind of pushes up into these mountains and it forces it up into the air, causing more storms to form. And out of those storms come a lot of outflow. This outflow lowers the pressure within our tropical wave, and that can cause for some weird movement. And again, this is only in the Dominican Republic and Hispaniola. And if we come over here to the eastern portion of Cuba, you can see that it also is a very mountainous area. You see a lot of mountains out over here, forcing that moisture kind of wringing it out like a towel, creating more thunderstorms, more outflow, and that cooler air mixed with the rays from the sun are going to help lower the pressure out here. It doesn't necessarily mean that the track is going to get pushed around too much, but we have seen this happen before where we have weak systems or even sometimes stronger systems come over mountains like these, and we see some weird behaviors that models struggle to handle. Now, if we come back and check in our current models, first that we're going to go back to the GFS model here. This is a deterministic run. And as I push this forward, you can see that Humberto is still expected to rapidly intensify. Our tropical wave is back over here near the Bahamas. Now, if those mountains continue to kind of slow our storm down and be pushing a little bit more to the west, this could make a closer approach to Florida than what the GFS is saying. But as of right now, it's still locking in on the fact that this could go into the Bahamas and then up into South Carolina as either a strong tropical storm or a hurricane. Now, if we come and compare 
compare that to the Euro model, it too has this, but look at it. It kind of keeps it close to those mountains, a little bit longer than the GFS does. And then look at that. It kind of pushes it up a little bit further to the West, but still ends up pulling it into South Carolina. But folks, the longer that it stays there, it also kind of increases the chances of Humberto catching up to our storm as well. So we still got a decent amount of uncertainty, which is troubling given that this storm is about four to five days from landfall. You can see that we're talking about October 1st as being the landfall date for our storm. But the slower movement is definitely important to monitor. Also, Humberto has been pretty slow as well. So it's going to take a lot to slow this storm down enough for some interactions between the two, which a lot of our models are indicating will sling this storm out to sea. A great example of that. Let's see if that's still in the CMC model. Greatest example of that is the Canadian model. You can see as it comes close to South Carolina, our low pressure from Humberto is interacting with our future Hurricane Elmelda, at least on this model. And as you can see, it grabs it, kind of pulls it away from land. But look at this, it tries to make its way back after that. This is pretty far out, so not really sure if that track back to the United States is very accurate, but you could definitely tell that these storms interact with each other. And then this is still a scenario that could happen. And then it gets flung out to sea. So not only are we going to have the strange Fujiwara effect that really doesn't happen that often in the Atlantic, there's also these mountain interactions that could throw a short term wrench into our forecast. You can see the CMC model keeps this thing close to Cuba pretty much almost all the way south of Florida and then just very last minute launches it off to the north and east and keeps it still potentially a hurricane as it approaches land but then again it's captured by Humberto and Bon Voyage. Since we're getting closer to landfall I do want to start talking about wind speeds here. This is the HWRF hurricane model our highest resolution models. It's like comparing the GFS to the HRRR which is our favorite model at least my favorite model for severe weather and this is very similar except for hurricane hurricanes. And as you can see, HWRF parent model also keeps us closer to Cuba for a lot longer before lifting up to the north. And then eventually it actually takes it into North Carolina as a hurricane. It'd be somewhere between 60 to 80 knots, which would be close to a category one strong category one or maybe a weak category two could be possible there now if we come over to the h fast model you can see that it lifts it up to the north almost immediately from cuba tracks through the bahamas but look at this the weaker the storm is the closer of approach it kind of makes to florida bringing at least some waves and riptides and look at that almost scrapes up the coast and then enters into southern south carolina maybe even georgia as a stronger tropical storm or a weak hurricane now one thing that's been pretty consistent on all these these models are the storm forming strengthening as it moves up to the north but then as it gets closer to the coast it does weaken a little bit and that is one due to land interaction also because we have a little layer of some cooler water temperatures just off of the shore not only that as this thing gets closer to the trough it's going to be coming down and picking it up more drier air is going to be wrapping around the storm as well the last scenario i want to look at is the h fast b which is a very very interesting scenario and it's actually one of the best case scenarios well um hold on <laughs> what happened hold on let's go back to uh, sometimes this model does not track the right low pressure system <laughs> I saw it on this run. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So as I push this forward, you can see that the low pressure system actually stays South Cuba and then all of a sudden rockets up to the north as a new low forms near the Bahamas. And then that comes up to the north. But look how weak our tropical system is right now. Barely even a tropical storm as it lifts up to the north and east. And maybe just maybe barely makes it to strong tropical storm strength before going into southern South Carolina. So it does seem like a stronger storms brings us a little bit further to the north and our weaker scenarios bring it to the west but we are also seeing a shift from a stronger hurricane into maybe even a weak category one maybe even a tropical storm which would technically be good news in terms of those coastal impacts so last but not least we're going to look at our ensembles this is going to give us a good understanding of what the average is from a lot of our models instead of just looking at one deterministic run you see a lot of our models are indicating Humberto is going to be a very strong storm out in the Atlantic mainly potentially a threat for Bermuda we're still watching for those potentials Euro model though is still keeping this storm pretty weak as it approaches the United States still a couple of members in there that are a little bit stronger but the majority at least of the Euro models is still indicating like a tropical storm and it looks like we could get impact really anywhere from parts of North Carolina into South Carolina but a lot of our models are locked in on South Carolina with still a couple trying to meander towards Florida also a couple of members also moving off to the right but the majority of them are going straight 
straight into South Carolina. GEFS ensemble is pretty similar here. You can see we are starting to get some agreement between our models a lot weaker than it was. That could also be because our storm is going to be a little bit slower because of those mountain interactions, a little bit weaker initially because of those interactions. And because of that delay of formation, it's going to have less time to strengthen. Still some stronger model members in there, but not as strong as previous runs. And the Google Deep Mind model has a whole different opinion. As you can see, it has a lot stronger of a storm. Staying closer to Cuba initially for a lot longer, Longer than eventually rocketing off to the north and coming very close to shore but you can see a lot of these kind of meander and stall near the coast that could bring in excess flooding threat and also a lot more models veering off to the right here but generally you can see we have a lot more oranges and reds in this and that indicates that our storm is probably gonna be stronger if it goes just like this according to the Google DeepMind which again is an AI model this is another AI model here and as you can see, it also tries to develop this into the Bahamas, a little bit weaker, kind of a middle ground between the Google DeepMind and the Euro and the GFS. And as you can see, still a little bit stronger, takes it very close into South Carolina, near North Carolina as well. So it looks like South Carolina to North Carolina are kind of in the bullseye, with the exception of a turn off to the east as it interacts with Umberto. So here's my thoughts for the east coast over there near South Carolina and North Carolina. I would definitely keep on keeping an eye on this storm. Once this storm gets over the warmer waters of the Atlantic and we start getting Hurricane Hunter plane data in, and we really start to lock in just how far this storm is from one, the trough that's ejecting out of the United States right now, and two, Humberto, who have a lot better understanding of how strong our storm is. I still think we're going to be getting that windshield wiper effect. But I think generally you guys should be making a plan just in case this does become a stronger storm, or even if it's just a major flooding threat, definitely should have a plan in place for all of that. And this is a hurricane. There will be, probably be some evacuations off of the coast. You don't need to be evacuating right now. You technically shouldn't be buying a bunch of emergency supplies right now, because again, we don't know exactly where this thing is going to make landfall yet. And we don't even have a specific state, although most models are saying South Carolina, again, with this very complex interaction with the mountains down here near Cuba, and then also with Humberto potentially maybe taking a small piece out of our storm and slinging it a little bit further to the east last moment. Still a lot of uncertainty uh, on our track. Seems like the intensity as well. So there's a lot of different things in this forecast that is going to be hard to do. And the bottom line is, though, you only need about four days to prepare. Three days max is usually pretty good enough. And one thing I want to stress before even anything gets started out there for the emergency officials out there and the governments of South Carolina and North Carolina. Please look after your lower income families. One of the big issues with Katrina was the middle class and the upper class were prioritized while the lower class, quote unquote, I like to say lower income, but you know, some people call them lower class. I don't like that. It's like a class system. Reminds me like the medi medieval ages. But look after them. Don't leave them behind if this becomes a stronger hurricane and everybody starts freaking out. There are people with families, with love, joy, and experiences, just like everybody else. They just didn't get as lucky as you. And may I add, I'm also, even with this YouTube channel, still technically part of lower income bracket. <laughs> you would technically be leaving people behind like me. Now, out across the United States, we are about to see a lot of dry air come in. And holy moly, there's already a lot of dry air and even more is going to be circulating around here over the next couple of days. Even if it warms up, it's going to be that dry heat, a lot more manageable. One thing we do have going on over here in the Pacific Southwest is we have a little bit of a low pressure system out here that is bringing some moisture into Arizona, expecting a small chance for a couple of severe storms out over here. So I would be keeping an eye on that. Look at our upper air pattern. You can see that we are going to have that low pressure that's going to continue to drape that cooler and drier air over the southeast in the eastern United States for a while. Then after that, we kind of get a more flat look to our jet stream up to the north, which will keep our weather pattern pretty quiet. Not really seeing anything too crazy. Maybe a little bit of a chance of severe weather up here by the 30th. Get this huge low off of the west coast, which could bring some moisture and some rain up into the Pacific Northwest. But generally, a lot of the United States is going to stay really quiet until we get some sort of trough come in, which might happen. Again, this is super far out as we move into the 4th of October, but no real way to tell if that's true or not at this point. Now, in terms of temperatures today, it's going to be cooler and drier in the 80s and 70s. For a lot of folks, 
it's going to be feeling really good out there. Still a little bit hot over here in the East Coast, down into Florida. Also warming back up into Central United States, but the Eastern, or Western United States is looking nice and cool as well. As we move into tomorrow, a little bit of a frontal boundary is going to be coming through the north of the United States. Maybe some general thunderstorms over there. A lot cooler over here as that trough continues to kind of swirl out here before future Amelda comes in. 60s and 70s all the way up to the northern United States. So generally hotter here into Texas, going down into Florida, but still a dry heat for the most part. As I continue to push this forward, you can see that really starts to warm up as we go into the 28th. You can see that really everybody pretty much to the east of Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, and New Mexico is going to be getting quite the warm up with the exception over here near the Great Lakes where that front is coming through and in the northeast. And as I continue to push this forward into the end of September, you can see that we're going to get a big cool down over here as Imelda comes over potentially South Carolina and North Carolina as a tr strong tropical storm or hurricane and still a lot of heat for a lot of folks. But let me do this for you. Coming over to our dew points, you can see that it's not going to be really that humid of a heat for most of the folks, but it is going to be getting a little bit more humid here into the southeast. Oh, not today, not tomorrow, but potentially a couple days after that could be seeing that moisture and that humidity return as that heat starts to rise. That's going to be it for me, folks. I do appreciate you guys tuning in and I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.